dear friends uh, this is a uh, attempt to explain things by writing on the board and uh, my board talk uh, student dr kumar shoma is very kind and gracious enough to rather give his own tripod and put my mobile in which the recording can be done so today we are going to discuss something which several people have asked me and there was a program for love for the love of mechanics and i showed two books uh, among which one was mechanics by smith and smith and this is my favorite mechanics books and and this helped me actually pass the uh, bachelor's uh without doing good in mechanics i possibly wouldn't have got an honors degree in mathematics from the university he it was that tough so because i don't know maybe there parallel in something like that he, he, doing a math honors at our time was essentially like appearing for the cambridge try try course so anyway uh, so several people have commented under that discussion of that video that i should teach a bit from this book so one of my favorite chapters in this book is chapter 4 called differential equations and their applications in mechanics this one so this chapter is a very beautiful way to learn about first and second order differential equations especially those which are helpful in mechanics and with that knowledge one can do a lot in studying physics or mechanics in mathematics so we will do i will try to teach from this chapter but not in one go that my confusion but today let me just introduce to you the way this book actually uses a vectorial approach to the thing and then derives everything so if you look at a particle particle could be a big ball also but I if I look at it from in a in the setting of a when a or say a pebble is moving you have thrown a pebble or small you know blue ball or tennis ball in the air but when we want to study its motion we basically want to look at its sense motion of its center of mass so point particle is the most important idealization in mechanics and that's a very very good idea so what we do that allows us to Really translate it immediately into a mathematical language because in a three D scenario, suppose this is the path a particle is taking. So here is my x, y, and z axis, and then if the particle is here, I'm just looking at its position in space. I'm not talking about time now. So here, of course, at, it starts at time t equal to zero here and it's moving through time. But I'm looking at position space. It has a coordinate x t because it's at some time t, depending on time, y t and z t. So this is the first thing. So this vector that you see is called r t. Mathematician would just write R T is equal to x t y z t, but it's standard practice for people in physics or those who keep studying me mechanics for the first time in the in the world of engineering possibly. This is the way to write it in terms of I vector. This is nothing but a linear combination for those who know linear algebra. I vector is nothing but the vector one zero zero. This is the basis basis vectors. Y t J vector plus Z T K vector. Now, suppose this thing is in a field of force, and this is moving because force has been applied on it. And then, then the key law describing the motion of this body is the Newton's second law of motion, which is given as F is m. into the double derivative of the radius vector which is 
intra acceleration, force is mass intra acceleration. So, this is a vectorial representation of Newton's second law. So you know this can now be written in terms of differential equations. So the, uh, the fourth vector f, it has itself three components because it is in three dimension itself. So I'll write it again in terms of this linear expansion. And if I'm talking to mathematics student, or in this particular vectorial form in terms of the unit vector i, j, k vectors. So now if I translate this into differential equation because r double dot is nothing but taking the second derivative of this. So r double dot at any time t is actually d2x dt2 i vector plus d2y dd2j vector plus d. So now what happens if I match this, now if I multiply by this by m, so every component m here would be multiplied by m. And now if I write down this law, then the now it becomes a scalar equation. This is a vector equation. Now I am making a scalar representation. So it will become m into thing which possibly you are more familiar with. So the general form of a Newton's law for a particle moving in space, 3D space, which is the real practical situation. You have three equations, three dis differential equations of second order defining it. So it's basically a system of differential equations. So the standard equations of motions, or in general, is a system of three differential equations of the second order. So it's important to know individually how to solve each of these systems. So this is how I write down the Newton's law. I hope that makes uh, it clear. So here I am not going to get into too many details immediately in the first uh, so let us uh, take an example. Of course, F1 can have a particular form, F2 can have a particular form, F3 can have a particular form. So depending on those particular forms, you will have different types of differential equations. So here, let me just uh, remove, uh, I'll just show an, one example from this book. When this f has a particular form, then how does the differential equation look? And it can look pretty complicated. So let's see that example and in the talk here. And from the next one, next uh, next class, I would say rather, the next talk, I would actually take a particular example and show the power of this law, the predictive power of Newton's second law, and how differential equations play the key role. So there are two types of differential equations. Differential equations means what we wrote down here was a differential equation. Differential equations are those equations which involve derivatives. 
and the order of the differential equation depends on the highest order derivative that is present there. Okay. So let us now consider, for example, here in an example one from page 92 of this book, which says that the force vector f is given as m times r vector cross v vector. v vector is a velocity vector. So this is a kind of torque that is being applied. Right? So if this is my vector, then what is my Newton's law? So my Newton's law, and how do I write my Newton, Newton's law in scalar components? So here it's a cross product of two vectors. So all these cross products, dot products, all these things become very important. And uh, this can be written as M R double dot. That's exactly what is written. Now, so now the M would cancel and R cross. Now, V, V vector is actually this. The velocity is nothing but the derivative of the position with respect to time. So, this is R vector, R dot vector is R. And you know how to calculate this. You have this i, j, k and x, y, z, z and x dot, y dot, z dot. So basically what is happening here, you are basically to write this, it is i vector. So you have a determinant that you have to calculate. And so you get a system of, you get a vector because you would write it for this, that particular system. So it will become x, I am not writing the t, y, z. Here it is x dot, y dot, z dot. And that is equal to r dot. That is the three, has a three second order derivative. So, in this particular case, what we have is d2x dt2 is y dz dt. I am sure you are able to calculate a determinant, and so which I am not doing in detail. In the same way, the way you calculate determinant, z dy dt, while d2 y dt2 has to be very carefully written because the second one, when you take the determinant, take the minus sign. So, so it will be plus minus plus. That will be the sign implication. So it is z dx dt minus x dz dt and d2z dt2 which is associated with the k vector would be x y dot minus x dot y which is x y dot so it is x dy dt minus yx dot, which is y dx right? So here, as you see, this whole system can be very complicated. The three systems, and each of them are not three. So once you have these kind of rotational motions involved, things can get quite complicated. Now many people might not know all these things in detail, and this, I, I take this opportunity to Advertise a book, oh, I do not know whether I am seeing it here. Maybe a book. I think I saw it here, but I do not have it. Oh, yeah, I found it here. It's, uh, I don't know, I just get this book. There is a book by Vect called uh, Vector Analysis by Murray Art Spiegel or Spiegel, whatever you want to call This is one of my most favorite mathematics books. I learned vector analysis from this. Because you learn the theory as well as the problem solving. You have all the details. You go from vector to tensor. It was a book which I bought when I was at St. Xavier's College. It is here written Joyri Bhatta, BSc Maths, St. Xavier's College. 
And also the name of my hometown, New Jalpai, I was pretty homesick, you know, staying in Calcutta, I was in Calcutta, and I was in my hometown was 600 kilometers north of Calcutta. So this was bought from my own pocket money, saving my own pocket money, and also doing tuitions, teaching others in my college days, and I used to hang in Calcutta buses and go to tuitions. So this is the start of this lecture on this beautiful subject of mechanics. It's it's, I think it gives a huge pleasure to the mind when you study this kind of things and when you can figure out how, how a simple twist in the motion of things uh, is, could be easy to complex mathematics, but there is no other way to do it. So this book, nowadays you have Indian editions and all, but this is a very fantastic book and it's something I've preserved for so many years and I've preserved all my life. It's one of my favorite books and you should use this book to actually understand uh, what vector analysis is. So with this, I wish you a good weekend, have a nice time and enjoy mathematics. Thank you very much.